I did a couple things to my supermoto bike and I figure I'll make a quick video, show you some things. It applies to cars and stuff as well. This is just mechanical stuff. So I haven't ridden this thing in about three weeks and I jumped on it and uh, ripped it around the block and I realized that my rear brakes are not working. The rear brakes right here, it's the foot pedal. Uh, I got a special hand brake right here. That's an aux brake, that's something different. But the master cylinder for it is right here. This wire right here is the uh, pressure sensor for the brake lights. This is Brembo. This would be the uh, master cylinder. And uh, this is the caliper. So I noticed that my fluid was, this is the sight glass for the fluid. It was all the way low. So you unscrew this top cap with a uh, 21 millimeter and you're gonna top off this fluid and it should be as easy as just cracking this bleed. It takes almost no fluid. So, so you really do need to uh, inspect your motorcycles on your brake fluid. Something like that could happen. I've had, I've been a mechanic at a motorcycle shop. I've had uh, over 35 bikes. I've bled lots of brakes. I've, I've worked on lots of brakes. I've worked on lots of motorcycles. So uh, anyway, typically it's not that uncommon to be low on brake fluid. Uh, so typically you could just top it off and bleed your, your bleeder. You got a bleeder screw right here, just like a car. So that's what I was doing, but it literally was taking me about 30 minutes and just pump, 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 pump. Nothing was happening. This fluid level in this master cylinder was not going down. I was not getting any action. So the first thing I did was, you see that's a eight millimeter. Uh, I took that bleeder screw out and I inspected the bleeder screw. Well, I've got this fat, uh, very fancy vacuum bleeder and I suggest everyone that's a mechanic should start getting stuff like this. And uh, nothing was coming out of the nipple as well. I realized that the, I pulled it all the way out and realized that nothing was wrong with the nipple. So the next step was I went ahead and just, I was gonna crack it from up here, but I'm lazy. So I always like to go to the easiest thing next. I didn't feel like taking this cover off or getting in here. Uh, so I went to this brake hose next and I took this banjo bolt off, the bolt that holds the actual hose fitting onto the caliper. And I noticed that nothing was really wanting to come out of there either. What I did was I took my vacuum bleeder and then I put it directly inside this hose and I plugged the other side with my thumb. And I wasn't getting any fluid out of that hose as well. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you might in different scenarios get fluid by pumping it and maybe holding the lever down or maybe it, it flows with the lever all the way up. You just, I was trying the different things real quickly, but I realized that after a while of me putting this suction barb directly on the hose, I was finally getting enough draw on this to get the air out. And you see how black and nasty this fluid was. Of course, this, the dirt is from my garage floor, but I could have had some crud in there or something uh, partial blockage, but once I got the fluid all the way through the hose, then I was able to put the banjo bolt back in and without the nipple in at all. So the banjo bolt fits in and then I was able to put my suction bleeder on just the end of the bolt. And then I was able to suck fluid and watch the draw come down. I was able to watch the sight glass, the fluid come down in my master cylinder and then I went to the third step, and the third step is normal bleeding, which definitely was not doing anything for me to begin with. Normal bleeding is when you simply pump up your cylinder and then you crack your bleeder screw like this, and you see some fluid come out. You see that fluid coming out? And then you hold it all the way down, and then you have to close your valve, and then you can repump it. And you'll do that multiple times until all the air is out of the line. So I was able to do that and everything's in good shape now. The brakes are working absolutely fantastic. I also straightened out my forks from a previous wreck last year, last season. And uh, 
all the traditional methods were not working because apparently I tweaked it pretty bad. So all I had to do was tie down the front end with uh, ratchet straps and I took the suspension all the way down to its very limit and then I loosened my bolts like normal. Just these two bolts, these two bolts, and then the axle bolts. And then I took my plastic hammer and just went tap, 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 tap. And then I put all my torque specs back in for, I do it by hand, obviously. I don't use a torque wrench because I just got the torque wrench specs built in to my hands at this point. But uh, I got everything torqued properly and now it drives absolutely perfectly straight. So now I just need to uh, put my O-ring, I need to buy a new O-ring kit because I'm leaking some um, exhaust at the header pipe. And I uh, need to put my headlight back on it and do some more ripping because I just got done taking my uh, granny gear off the front. This is like a 14 tooth. And I guess you got done putting my smaller sprocket on it. And this thing rips. 